kind of make these opportunities happen. You can present actionable information, things they can take away and use. And you can listen to your visitors. That one was the one that came at the top of everybody. You listen to your visitors, you talk to them. Not only talk to them on the tour, but you try in general, find out why are you here? What do you like? What thing is going to resonate with you? That talking to your visitors you know, really can't be, I can't push that one too hard. I'm putting this in, it's just, Nap has this in the back of his book. He was an interpreter for 10 years before he went on to get his uh, PhD in uh, interpretation. I'm not sure what he got in there. He now teaches at Indiana in Bloomington. But looking back on these 10 years, he said, I wish I would have known that Tilden was right. You really do need to make those connections. You need to find out who the visitors are and their relationship with the topic at hand. I've got a great example of that of a tour I took the Kennedy Museum in New York City. Many of you been there? A few of you have. It's uh, they have some buildings that are furnished. Different rooms are furnished in different ethnic groups in different time periods. So as you go through, you see those different rooms, and they tell you stories about what went on there. Before we started the tour, the interpreter, uh, the tour guide, got us all together in a semicircle, and he said, "Lori, any anyone here in this group ever have anyone in their background at all emigrate to America from another country?" <laughs> right. What country? So he hooked us immediately on the very first question, connected us to the whole theme of the tour. And then and as we went through, there was this young couple from California, and I moved from one room to another, and I heard the, the man say to the woman, he said, wow, the stories that are here, this is incredible. So it was like, you know, he connected us right away, and they told stories. Two really powerful things. The Tenement Museum, by the way, as much as I can tell, is really kind of risen to fame in the museum field, mostly word of mouth. And I think it's a large part of people go and have a great experience. Um, clue elements will keep memory alive. That's the personal connection, that's the hands-on minds on stuff. Every side has a hook, you know, put your hook. Don't be afraid to play that hook up, because you have a reason for your existence, and people want to know it. I've been working with the Historic Arkansas Museum, and creating a theme for their tour, which they didn't have. The theme is this was, you know, the, this is a microcosm of the West expansion, at any rate. And this, it's a series of um, buildings from the 1820s, 30s, and 40s, which are still downtown and tackle the rock. You know, tell them what it is right at the beginning, and then let them discover the authenticity of it through your tour. So go ahead and use that. Um, oh, and this other thing, children. If you're going to reach the adults, reach the children. That was one of the key things in the Connor Perry study. They found they were losing the kids, and they lose the adults, and then they lose the family. Um, we're out of time. So I don't do, I'm not going to do another activity, but it would be of value for you to think about some ways that you could concretely try and make those connections at your site. And we'll, you know, that information will be sent to you probably within the week. And let's go ahead. These are just a list of different kinds of connections. Uh, these have all come, the, the ones on the left, well, some of these have come through my more, more oral history research. These have come through some other research that other people have done. There seems to be a wide variety of kinds of connections. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to find what can actually work. Now, it takes more than that to do a good tour. I'm not going to get into that right now. But you want to do storytelling is really important. I was working a lot with the people in Arkansas to say, you've got some information. Don't present it as information. Let's look at it as a story. And it really, it really flip-flops things when you make it a story. It makes it much more engaging, attractive to people. Um, but anyway, there's a lot more you need to do than just the personal connections. But that's a really, really important. So how do you make it happen? We won't do this either. Rehearsed improvisation. <laughs> it comes out of sort of theater. Is that me? Anybody else? Um, you've got to practice. I came up with this. We used to use this at the 1840 house at the Baltimore City Life Museum. After I went, read a, a story by Mark, or something by Mark Twain saying, you know, if I, I'm going to misquote him, but if I, if I would have had three weeks, I would have written you a shorter letter. <laughs> it's like, you know, you have to rehearse it, get to practice it, get it together, with the idea that when 
somebody sees it, it looks like it's spontaneous. It looks like it's just being improvised. It looks like it's off the cuff. But it's only because you haven't intentionally looked at what you want to do. So we used to uh, function at the 1840 house with what I used to call a wardrobe of possibilities. I tried to have the interpreters imagine they had all these hooks with different little bits hanging on them. This might be a hands-on thing they could use. This might be a story they could tell. So when you enter a space, you have all these you know, handful of things that are all related to the themes of the space that you could then do with visitors. But you've got to intentionally design them, and you need to practice them. Of course, the challenge is, I'm sure it's not true with any of you here, I've found it incredibly hard to get people who have been doing tours for a long time to want to change. <laughs> I think if I'm going to leave you with any challenge, it would be think about some of these things. Think how you might incorporate them. Try them a little bit. Best if you can try them maybe with one of your peers. You know, do it with them. See how it works. Take like little baby steps and think about trying to change things so you can make sure that it's not your tour that's going to make people say, I'm going to go to the house again. But they're going to say, man, that was great. I'm bringing all my friends. I'm telling everybody I know. So that next one has my email. Feel free to email me if you want to get any of this, but I think you've got all the emails, don't you? So up through Rod, I'll send more material out to you than you want. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. For your time.